The Late Show is back on Monday. Real and the surreal with theatre de complicité. Would you like a coffee? <laughs> oh, thank you. Barry Humphreys talks to himself. So why not? Heavy metal sculpture by Richard Serra on its way to the Tate Gallery. And cultural supremo Jack Lang, now ten years as France's own Minister of Fun. Architecture of the cutting edge. Santiago Calatrava in Seville and Frank Geary in Los Angeles. British films lost forever. I don't believe it. New art from Africa stepping out of the tribal tradition. And television football, where it's been and where it's heading. Dalton, a goal! That's The Late Show, Woo! back Monday, 11.15 on BBC Two. OK, guys? Yeah? I've got a great idea for Edinburgh Nights. No, too late, Bosch. They already did that for tonight's show. Freddie Francis, Pina Bausch, and an American werewolf in Edinburgh. That's Edinburgh Nights after Newsnight. tonight, the great debate on the future of Europe. Will the eyes or the nose have it as President Mitterrand takes to the airwaves to fight for the Maastricht Treaty? Good evening. Tonight, the great French debate on the Treaty of Maastricht, a debate that could settle not just the fate of France, but the future of the whole of Europe, is now underway. Right now, on French television, President Mitterrand, who didn't have to offer his people a referendum, whose own popularity has been waning, and who's having to call on all his powers of showmanship to try and sell the treaty to France, is slugging it out with Philippe Seguin, a heavyweight in all senses of the word, who so far rallied around half the electorate against Maastricht. Well, we'll be bringing you the latest on that debate. We'll also be considering how far Europe's elites, governments and diplomats have failed to keep their peoples on side in the great European debate. And we'll be hearing from Denmark, where they've already said no to the Maastricht Treaty, from Germany, where the people aren't going to be given the chance to vote yes or no in a referendum, though if there were one, the voters might be less enthusiastic than their Chancellor, Helmut Kohl, and here in London, we'll be talking to a vice chairman of the Tory party. If the French do vote no, then the Conservative government, as holders of the EC presidency, will have the job of clearing up the mess. Also, a new appeal has been launched today to provide food and longer-term aid for those in danger of starving in Africa. And it's been revealed that as many as 40 million people could be at risk. And from Baidoa, Somalia where 3,000 people a week are dying of hunger and disease, we report on the Somali groups who hold the balance between survival and total anarchy in what was once unbelievably called the Paradise City. President Mitterrand and Philippe Seguin are locked in a verbal TV battle to persuade the French to vote for or against Maastricht, even as we speak. We'll be looking at that in a moment. But first, here at home, Chancellor Norman Lamont's been trying to head off the danger that a French no vote might put intolerable downward pressure on the pound, so forcing an interest rate rise. He's borrowed seven and a quarter billion pounds to support sterling on the foreign exchanges. That's a manoeuvre too costly to engage in too often. The pound did gain one and a quarter fennigs against the German mark. Well, that may have cheered John Major, but he'll probably have been less pleased by the claims of Lady Thatcher, who warned that nationalism and conflict could be the price if a European superstate were created. Well, now to David Sells, who's been following the Mitterrand debate, still running on French television. Even if President Mitterrand wins his Maastricht referendum, the margin of victory is likely to be thin. He will have stirred up a hornet's nest of doubt and discontent, and the French people will have been seen to be less than wholehearted in their commitment to this design for Europe's future. A blunder extraordinary for such a calculating leader. Deluded by the opinion polls, Monsieur Mitterrand has outfoxed himself. He need never have resorted to a referendum, but thought to take easy profit from the disarray of France's right-wing parties. Now is the biter bit. 
Philippe Séguin, his challenger tonight, says no to the referendum. He's a maverick Gaullist, a patriot with a strong social conscience who once likened himself to our own Tory wets. Mr Séguin is all for Europe, but a Europe des patries, as de Gaulle used to say, a Europe of sovereign states.